Hey there, welcome to one another interesting video. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about the different issues of power quality or different problems of the power quality. In the previous video, we talked about the importance of power quality, why you should consider uh, the power quality as paramount important. We saw from the perspective of the utility, we saw from the perspective of customer as well. Certainly, power quality is super critical. And there are certain issues of the power quality about which we are going to talk. So we saw in the end of the previous video, there are transients, there are a long duration voltage variation, short duration voltage variation, voltage imbalance, waveform distortion, voltage fluctuations, power frequency variations. All these are called as the power quality issues or the power quality problems. Now, uh, certainly we cannot cover everything in the one video. So what we have decided is we have split we have splitted the video into two parts. In part one, we are going to cover the transient long duration voltage variations and short duration voltage variation. And part two of this video will cover the balance issues or the balance problems. And the video about that will be coming soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the update. For now, let us start by understanding what is transients. So transient is one of the word that is very commonly used in the analysis of power system. So simply transients are like an event that is undesirable and momentary in nature. Now here the word momentary is very, very important. Uh, when we say transient, then you have to keep thing in your mind that is very, very clear. It is momentary in nature. It will remain in the system for a very short time and then it will die down. You can see one example on your screen here. You see this is a transient that has occurred and uh, it, it's a peak value, right? It's a momentary in nature and quickly within few microseconds, it will die down. So such scenarios, uh, such event is what we call as the transient. So it could be a voltage transient or it could be a current transient. So anything is possible. Example, what you can see on your screen is the uh, current transient that, that we see. Now, along with transient, uh, for transient, there is one similar word that is also very frequently used and that is the surge. Now, when we say surge, uh, the utility engineers mostly say it's a lightning surge that is happening in the system and to protect that, we need to provide the lightning arrester. But certainly there could be voltage surges that is happening because of the switching operations of uh, the different equipment. Now this is basically seen in high and extra high voltage system. So when circuit breaker trips and high voltage system, there is a possibility that there will be a switching surge coming in. So surge and transient are the words that are interchangeably used for to represent only one scenarios. Now in transient, we have two different variants for that. So let us talk about that now. So the first variant is impulsive transient. An impulsive transient is a sudden non-power frequency change in the steady state condition of voltage, current or both that is unidirectional in polarity. So what is impulsive transient? It is something, it is a transient that is number one unidirectional and it remains in the system for a very, very long time, a uh, very, very short time, not long time. Just uh, remember that. So unidirectional means you can see here the example of current transient here. You see uh, this transient has occurred only in the negative cycle of the current. So this is a negative cycle. You see zero, negative five, negative 10. It has only happened only in one direction. And hence it is called as impulsive transient. It remains in the way system for a very, very short time. You see this impulse has opened, uh, occurred and it has remained for maybe 20 microseconds or like that. And then slowly it is dying down. And that is the reason why you will also find when we say lightning impulse, it is mentioned as 1.2 times 50 microseconds. So what does that mean? It means that uh, it's an impulsive transient and it will reach to its highest peak in 1.2 uh, microseconds and then it will decay uh, to half of its peak by 50 microseconds. So that is basically represents the impulsive transients that we have. One of the most common reason for having impulsive transients in the system is the lightning strokes. Clear? So that is about the impulsive transient. The next type that we have is oscillatory transients. Now, an oscillatory transient is a sudden non-power frequency change in the steady state condition of voltage, current or both. That includes both positive and negative polarity value. 
Now the difference between the impulse you on oscillator is that impulse you was only unidirectional, only in one single direction, but oscillatory can go into both the directions, so positive and negative. You can see example here. There is a transient and it is it changes very rapidly uh, and it occurs at both the end of uh, the uh, cycle and it certainly remains in the system for a longer period than the impulsive transients. So you can see on the graph also it is remaining for around two to three milliseconds. So that is oscillatory transient. Now based on the frequency parameter these oxidatory transients are classified into three different types let us understand that so if the frequency component is greater than 500 kilohertz then it is called as high frequency transients if the frequency component is between 5 to 500 kilohertz then the transient is called as the medium frequency transients and if it is less than 5 kilohertz then it is called as the low frequency transient now, there are certain causes or uh, certain issues because of which the this transients occurs in the system and those are like uh, the capacitor bank switching. So when we switch on or switch off the supply of capacitor bank, you will see uh, this oscillatory transients happening in the system. Or maybe you're re-energizing the system after uh, the power failure that will also cause this and sudden stoppages of the large equipment. So not necessary, this is happening because of the utility issue. This could very well happen because of the customer issue. So if let's say your huge induction motor suddenly stops, then you will certainly see auxiliary transients in the system. So that is all about the transients. Now moving on, let's talk about the long duration voltage variations. So long duration variations covers root mean square or the RMS deviation at power frequencies for longer than one minute. So far when we were talking about the transients, we were talking about the peak values in the system. But when we talk about long duration voltage variation, we are talking about the root mean square values, RMS values. Now this is very, very important. You understand this difference. And if you don't know what is RMS value and why we use it, then I have a dedicated video on that. I'll provide a link for it down in the description. You can go and check it out after this video. So we are talking about now the deviation that happens on the RMS value and at power frequency. Now what is power frequency? Power frequency means the frequency at which we are generating, transmitting and distributing the electricity, which is mostly the 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So we are, we are covering those deviations that is happening at the power frequency and they are for longer than one minute. Now there are people, most of the people will get confused between what is over voltage, what is, uh, uh, you know, voltage sag, voltage swell, there is confusion, but that confusion will be clarified uh, in, in this uh, slides now. So that is long duration voltage variation and there are certain categories of uh, long duration voltage variation that we have which is mostly the over voltage or the under voltage. Let us have a look at that. Starting with the over voltage. So an over voltage is an increase in the RMS AC voltage greater than 110% at the power frequency for a duration longer than one minute. So if your voltage rated voltage is let's say 100 volts but from your system 110 volts is flowing continuously more than for one minute then it is called as over voltage. Now clearly these are the definitions given by the standards which says your voltage must be more than 110 percent of uh, the regular RMS value and it should flow in the system for more than one minute then only it can be referred as the over voltage. You can see one example here. This is the green wave it represents the normal voltage, but suddenly if the voltage increases and it stays for more than one minute, then it's certainly the over voltage. This is most common problem of the power quality that most of us have noticed already. And the general cause of this is the switching of the load, which of course we cannot avoid. So that's the reason why you will see frequent over voltages happening in the system. So load switching off when we do, when we switch off a huge amount of load, you will see a sudden spike in the system. Then if you have set the tappings of the transformer incorrectly, then the system will see the continuous uh, over voltage happening in the system. So those are some of the causes of the uh, voltage variation or the over voltage. The next category that we have is the under voltage. Now an under voltage is a decrease in the RMS AC voltage less than 
90% at the power frequency for a duration longer than one minute. So it is exactly opposite to that of over voltage. Uh, we saw in over voltage if value is going above 110 uh, percent then it's uh, over voltage but here if the value is reducing below 90 percent then it is an under voltage uh, you can see one example here so this red portion shows uh, the voltage has dropped below 90 percent and it is staying in the system for more than one minute and then it is it can be referred as the under voltage now the causes of under voltage is exactly opposite to that of the causes of the over voltage that we discussed. So uh, we saw when we switch off the load, you see over voltage. But here when you switch on the load, you see under voltage. Capacitor bank switching off will also cause under voltage or overloaded circuit will result in the under voltage issue. So if you overload the circuit, uh, naturally uh, the voltage will go down because of the voltage drop and you will notice the under voltage issues. This is super critical topics uh, for the sensitive equipment uh, and, and we discussed about the importance of power quality already in the previous video. The third category that is there in the long duration voltage variation is sustained interruptions. So when the supply voltage has been zero for a period of time in excess of one minute, the long duration voltage variation is considered a sustained interruption. So if your supply is gone for one person uh, one minute more than one minute then it's a sustained interruption and maybe most of the time you may need to have human interruption here to see what's the issue and uh, clear it out in case if the reclosures are not in the place so those are the three categories of uh, the long duration voltage variation the important point that you must note is these are the scenarios which remains in the system for more than one minute that is very very important please highlight that part now moving on to the third category and the last category of this video that is short duration voltage variation so short duration variation covers rms deviation at power frequencies for shorter than one minute so we saw the long duration which is more than one minute and now this is the short duration voltage variation is less than one minute again we have categories here let's talk about that so first one, let's start with the voltage sag or it is also referred as the voltage deep. A sag is a decrease to between 0.1 and 0.9 per unit in RMS voltage or current at the power frequency for duration from 0.5 cycles to 1 minute. So what we are saying is voltage sag or deep is a reduction in the voltage up to what level? Up to 0.1 to 0.9 per unit. So here we are referring it with the per unit or you can say percentage as well, 10% uh, to 90% uh, decrease in the voltage, but which is lesser than one minute that is called as voltage sag or voltage deep. We saw under voltage in the long duration voltage variation, which was greater than one minute. The voltage sag and voltage deep would be lesser than one minute. Again, the major cause for this is the switching of the different loads that we do. Uh, the same causes that we discussed about the under voltage uh, will be applicable here also for voltage sag. So the major difference is between under voltage and voltage sag is the duration of uh, the drop in the voltage. Then the next category is voltage swell. Swell is again exactly opposite to that of the voltage sag. So a swell is defined as an increase to between 1.1 to 1.8 per unit in RMS voltage or current at the power frequency for duration from 0.5 cycles to one minute. So clearly if your voltage is going 110% up to 180% for a duration less than one minute, then it is referred as the voltage swell. What is the difference between voltage uh, over voltage and voltage swell? It's the duration of uh, the voltage that remains in the system. Swell is therefore less than one minute. Again, the causes for this would be similar to that of uh, the over voltage. The third category that we have in the short duration voltage variation is the interruption. So an interruption occurs when the supply voltage or load current decreases to less than 0.1 per unit for a period of time not exceeding one minute. Again, this is exactly opposite uh, to that of uh, the sustained interruption that we saw which was there for more than one minute but here it is less than one minute and if the voltage value falls below the uh, one ten percent mark uh, of the rms value then it is called as the interruption you can see 
uh, one one figure here. So we have some issue in one phase, and as a result, the voltage has dropped to a low value, but it raised again and back to normal after few seconds only. So which was which of which was less than the uh, one minute value. So certainly this will be referred as the interruption. If it would have stayed in the system for more than one minute, then we would have called it sustained interruption. There is a difference between these two. Clear? So those are the short duration voltage variation. Now let us quickly summarize what we discussed in this video. So first we saw about the transient. We saw there are two different types of transients. We saw uh, there are impulsive transient and then there are auxiliary transients. Then we talked about the long duration voltage variations, which include over voltage, under voltage and sustained interruption. Now, all these are categorized because they remain in the system for more than one minute. Then lastly, we also talked about the short duration voltage variation, which remains in the system for a period less than one minute. And that include voltage swell, voltage sag and interruption. Those are the category of uh, the short duration voltage variation. In the next video, we will talk about the voltage imbalance, the waveform distortion, voltage fluctuation and power frequency variation. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for that so that you don't miss any of the update. I hope you got understanding of uh, these three important uh, issues of the power quality or the problems of the power quality. If you found the video helpful, then do like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in my next one. But till then. Keep watching, keep learning.